Yo, how's it going folks? It's me again, your boy Tabo and welcome to another tutorial on 3JS. So today I'm going to be teaching you how to set up the lightning strike module. As you can see, this is what we're going to be working with. I think this is probably one of the coolest things that you can do with 3JS. So yeah, this is going to be just a basic understanding of how to set it up. And yeah, in terms of what you can do with it, uh, yeah, the potential is immense. I have a couple of ideas myself of what I would like to try out and then share it with you guys. So without further ado, let's just jump right into it. Okay, so over here, I've got my code set up. So this is going to be lesson 10. Okay, as usual, I'll be sharing the code in the description. Okay, once again, um, this is not a newbie tutorial. So if you want to learn 3JS, I will put a link in the video description. So yeah, this is the setup that we're going to be needing. Uh, the usual import 3JS module, and then we're going to use the orbit control, outline pass, render pass, shader pass, effect composer, a lightning strike. Uh, that's the main theme right here. And so in terms of the renderer, this is the usual setup. The only thing that will be different this time is we're going to be using shadows. So in our renderer, we're going to have our shadows enabled. So we have our uh, shadows enabled. Uh, then you choose the shadow map type. I'm using 3.pc soft shadow map. You can still use the default. It's not really that important. Our renderer, then well, we're going to use physically correct lights. So I set this up to true. You will notice that yeah, then the lights usually have to be bumped up really high in order for you know them to work properly but it's fine it's it's better that way sometimes i think it's it's, it's it looks better let me just put it that way okay so this is the basic setup right you've got our camera uh, i've got the camera background color so these are the settings for our camera then i've already set up the positioning for the camera and over here, well, this is a window resize um, function. This is just to manage the window so that when I resize, then it maintains the uh, pixel aspect ratio so that the image does not distort or anything like that. And then it just runs the render again and sets the size according to that current window width. That's all that is. These are just basic setups uh, that I usually have before I start. So I'm just going through this uh, to make sure that I don't miss out on anything because sometimes I forget and forgive me if I do. Okay, so we're gonna first start with um, the floor. And I'll just paste it over here. So yeah, this is our floor. This is just a basic mesh with uh, using a plain geometry and then I'm using mesh standard material. And here are the settings. It's gonna be white and I'm gonna turning metalness to one and so we're going to set it up to receive shadows so the shadows that are going to be cast by our objects from the point light we're telling this to receive those shadows and then we add it to the scene then after that then we can already just um, set it up properly so i'm going to rotate it in the x position so that it is flat at a 90 degree angle then we've got our scaling so i'll set it up to 50 position is minus one okay and so next up uh, we're gonna then create our cubes okay so now we've got our geometry i called it cube because this is just what i used before to test it out so i just kept the name doesn't really matter so here i create a dodecahedron geometry and this is what I'm going to be using to then create the different meshes. Okay, so it's all going to be the same shape. I just use the basic shape um, of the dodecahedron. You can put in whatever value you want here to determine the size, basically the radius. So that is like the first um, parameter or argument that you can set up there. So this is just basic mesh standard material with color metalness turned to one wireframe two and then with uh, an emiss of color. Okay, so now we're gonna also then set these up to cast shadows. So we're gonna take all of them and then make them cast a shadow. If you're not familiar with this, this is just one of the things that you can do in uh, JavaScript. So that's what that does over there. Okay, so next up, we're gonna 
then set up our light. So we create a point light and I give it this color over here, which is more like a, almost like a blue cyan mid. Yeah, that's something like that. Anyway, so um, then we're gonna set the light to cast the shadow and then we add it to the scene. Okay, so these are the, this is the setup for uh, our shadow map. Okay, so this is usually the default setting. So you can pump it up over here if you want the shadow to be smoother or to, to well, increase the resolution that is. So this is the setup, it's 512 for the size and then the camera near is 0 0.5 and then camera far is 500. Okay, so now we can then um, set up the positioning. So we're gonna put it in that position over there. Okay, so next up, um, we're gonna create a function called uh, create outline. Basically, when it comes to the naming for this, uh, well, I just took it from the examples, but then I just tailored it to suit my needs. Okay, so here is our create outline. So it's gonna take the scene and then object array. Uh, that will be basically the an, an array which contains all the objects that we want to render the outline on. Okay, so here we create an outline pass. Okay, new outline pass and then um, the new three vector this is the setting for, for the size of the window, okay? So basically it's gonna be using this value, you know, to also manage uh, the distortion and all of that to make sure that everything is rendered collect correctly. So we've got our scene, we're gonna use our camera and then object array, okay? These are from here. And so this is the edge strength. So you can control over these, the edge glow, this is how fine the glow is you know if you want it to be more um what's the word sharp then you can also just use use this uh, these values to control that and then the edge uh, thickness as well so yeah the, this is the basic setup that i've got uh that makes you know what i did uh, look the way that it does so in here we're gonna we have we, we haven't created a composer as yet so but we're gonna use a composer then we're gonna run everything in here. So we're gonna create a effect composer soon. So that'll be coming. And then after that, then we return the outline pass, okay. So here we've got our parameters. So what I did is that I just copied these straight from the examples because I just wanna save time. Don't wanna do all of this by myself. But if you wanna fully understand what they do, you can check out the examples um, on the 3js.org. For instance, when you come here to the examples, they've got this GUI set up here. So here in the GUI, this is where you can try out some of these. So you've got the straightness, roughness, and all of that. So I didn't set up a GUI because I don't really want to spend all that time doing that. But just to give you a quick rundown, uh, source offset, um, this is where the lightning starts. This is the root. And then this is the destination, all right? So the radius, uh, this is also the radius for, for the beginning and this is the radius for the end. So if you want it to be thinner at the point, at the point you can just uh, turn this down or the other way around, whatever tickles your fancy. So roughness, this is, um, this influences more like the jittery effect that you get. Let's look at this like roughness. If you turn it down, then this is, you know, it doesn't move all that much. But if you do so, that's, you know, so so that's basically what roughness does. And then straightness, this determines how straight or how jagged our lightning bolt is. So if you want it to be more jagged, then you uh, turn this down. If you want it to be straight, then you turn this up. So this is what we're gonna be working with. So I've got three of these. Um, so I'm just gonna paste them. Okay, so we've got array params two and array params three. Okay, so there we go. There are our parameters. So I'm just gonna close these just to manage the space. 
Okay, and then down here, I'm going to create um, some variables. So this is the lightning strike and lightning strike mesh. Since we have three of them, uh, the, uh, these are just the variables for that. So next, I'm creating an array. So the outline mesh array. This is what we're going to be using here. This object array, this is what we're going to be using to then capture, well, to put in all the objects that we want to put an outline on and then we will feed that to that over there. The next up, we create a function called the recreate array. Okay, so inside of here, then I create a lightning strike. So I'm using these variables over here. So I create a lightning strike and then I give it the parameters. And then the lightning strike mesh is basically a, a mesh with the basic material and then I'm using the lightning strike. Okay, so I create three of them. And then after that, then I just push that into our array. Okay, so I push each one of them in there and then I add it to the scene. So that's all that does. So next up, we create our composer. Okay, so we're gonna create the IFX composer, pass it the renderer. If you don't know how to use post processing effects, once again, I will uh, put a link to my tutorial on post processing effects. Just if you wanna know how to set that up as a beginner. So I've got a beginner tutorial for that, but right now I'm not gonna explain too much as to how that works. You can check it out later, but you can follow still. Okay, so now that we've got that set up, I'm gonna then call our functions. So then we're gonna call our recreate array recreate array function and then we create and then we call our create outline so here we've got our scene then we feed it the outline mesh array over here with all these objects right here so all only these objects are going to have the outline on it and so this is the color for our outline okay um i realized that i didn't add the cubes to the scene so i'm just going to add them over here because in my in my code i had done this somewhere else but yeah I'm just gonna come back here and just add my uh, cubes over here that's that okay so we've got that set up and so inside of our and our recreate array career effects composer okay inside of our um, window resize function then we're gonna take we're gonna paste in the composer because we also need to manage this since we're gonna be using it to render. So that uh, also needs to be re-rendered every time you resize your window. So I think that's basically set up. And then over here, then we're gonna create an, a variable called T. So this is just what we're gonna use to manage our time, sorry. Then we'll say it's equal to zero. And then just here, we're just gonna start by incrementing it. So say T, and then we'll say plus equals 0 0.01. Okay, so now that we've got that, well, this setup, you should, well, all of this you should have. This is just the basic setup. And then inside of here, then this is where we're gonna set up everything. So, okay, so I wanna map through our cubes so what I do is I create this kind of array over here and then I map through the objects so I just want to rotate our cubes that's what that is doing next up I then create the positioning so I just set up the position and um, this is for the animation in the in the y-axis so to create that kind of bouncy ball effect this is what that is doing but this is just the positioning uh, for our cubes. Okay, so then we create uh, an if statement uh, using our lightning strike. So we say when all of this is there, then we're gonna then use this. So we're gonna say lightning strike rate parameters. So the source offset, right? Um, this is this one over here that I was explaining just earlier, sorry. Again, the rate parameter, the source offset and the destination offset. This is what we're setting up in this if statement. So I'm setting it up to the position of cube one and then the destination is cube two. So, so on it goes. I'm just basically setting it up using the cube positions to determine where it starts and where it, where it hits. Okay, the beginning and end destination. So once I've done that, then I update each and every one of them. So lightning strike, 
two and three are updated and then I use our time factor to update it. So that's pretty much that. Okay, and once all of that is done, then I'm gonna use our composer. So I'll just take our composer. Usually I would render using the renderer, but since we wanna see our lightning effects, then we're gonna use the composer. So I've got the light intensity also that I'm animating using the math random so that you've got that uh, flickering effect. So I've got that also set up and then I'm gonna run the composer. So yeah, um, let's check it out. And this should be running as expected. So I'm gonna run the server. If you haven't done this before, when you run your server, then it should be running on port 8080 usually if you're not using that port already. Oh, my bad, my bad. I forgot to actually create uh, the offset variable. <laughs> Over here, because inside of here, I'm using offset um, to um, add that to the to, to the time basically and then I'm uh, incrementing it yeah that's that okay so I, I'm sorry about that um, that must have been confusing so let's check it out okay so there we go so there's our setup right there so everything is working as expected you can see our lightning is doing its thing so yeah people so that's pretty much how you set that up um, I can just do quick things just to make you understand some of the things like a little bit. For instance, straightness. Okay, I want this to be like really straight. So I'm just gonna make this one, just for one of them. You see, this one over here, see how straight that is? That's because of that. Okay, I'm gonna turn it back. So yeah, um, this is pretty much it. You know, like I said, I don't want this to be long. So I'll be sharing the code. Uh, if there is yeah, anything that you would like to say, comment, uh, or anything that you'd like to ask, any tutorials that you would like to see, let me know. Um, yeah, in terms of yeah, helping me grow my channel, please subscribe hit the notification bell, um, like, please take the time if you can, you know what I mean? Uh, it hel it will help me a lot. So besides all of that, then I enjoy doing this and I uh, hope you like it too. So with all that said, I just want to say love and peace, my brothers and sisters. I'm out.